happened using Revolution on a Mac Mini connected to a Windows 2000 server using Revolution and all the little handshaking and error checking and sending stuff back and forth. So it's a very fast, snappy system, which surprised me because I was hoping to get 300 transactions per second. I was crossing my fingers when I was building it, and I was very happy to know that that's very easy to get with this UDP technology that's built into the old runtime revolution, which is what I started off on. It could do it, and of course the new live code can do it as well. Um, all of the libraries are the same. So what I'll do now is just open it up for questions, because there are so many little wrinkles here that could come in. Um, I'm sure that some people are just overwhelmed with how many bits of jargon are thrown into this. Um, let's see, I'm getting a, a question. Let's see, so another, from Bob Bridgewater. So another example of how a real language like C or C++, etc., is not absolutely necessary to do things well. Life Code Revolution shines here too, which it really does. And the code is written almost like personal conversation. I've always been impressed with HyperTalk and even more impressed with live code. You can create your own kind of jargon because some of the words that are key, like open datagram socket, make sense. And then how you choose to put your variables together, your parsing together, and whether you use custom properties or a SQL database is all up to you. And it, it's very interesting how I can go back and look at a system I did five years ago and I could pretty well figure out exactly what I was doing. Even though I do a much better system nowadays because I've learned so much, I can go back and find out what the heck I was doing. And uh, you're right. that This, this is one where the English-like nature is good, but you got to learn what the terms are first. And this event looping is the critical part. What happens first, second, third, fourth, fifth? And when one of them doesn't happen, nothing else happens. Where do you look? What little thing went wrong? And one of the difficult parts of UDP and TCP and the networking in general is when it fails, there's no evidence. You can't go look at something to find out where it failed. The debugging sort of works, but the event between computers dies, and you don't know why it died, where it died. You just know it didn't get to the other end. And that's why you build in some of the, uh, the, re the acknowledgement pa reply packets. And if somebody wants to see a little bit more of the kind of code that I would put together for more sophisticated UTP, UDP work, just you know contact me and I can send you some of those loops, if this, if that, if the other, and what to do. And what I love to do with UDP especially, because that's what I've been doing, I write the loops so that they correct themselves when they get into a, a, a no-win situation of some sort. This way I only get one tech support call. I think I've only gotten one tech support call for the, um, the Portland Data Center in my system, which runs 24-7. I think I got one four months ago, and the one before that was like in January. So I get about one tech support phone call or email, really. They don't call me on the phone. They just send me an email going, why doesn't this work like it should? My transaction ID is all wacky or something. Um, it's about once every every four months I get a get a phone call, which is what I like. I don't want to be on this system every, every day. Um, and in case you're wondering, I use screen sharing between my Mac to any one of those four Macintoshes to do the coding. I, I write slightly different code on each Macintosh for a reason, and I go in and I do the, uh, the editing. Then I use remote connection, I believe that's what it's called, remote connection from one of the Macs to the Windows 2003 server because they want that behind another firewall for extra protection because it's a, it's a sensitive it's, a, it's got sensitive information on it, and there's a reason why they want it buried further back. Um, the Macintoshes are right on the Internet. They're just set up with static IPs, and it's just sending the information. And, uh, but I've designed them in a way where you virtually cannot find them. Um, so if someone trying to go in and pound on them, they, they can't find them. They probably will have no evidence that they're out there on the Internet. Um, then I process the information and forward it to the 2003 server, and to program that server, I use 
screen sharing to get to the Mac Mini, and then I use the remote connection 